this oldest citizen was my great, great, great grandmother. And her name was Mrs. Otis. She was Mrs. Durham and her husband died and she married Colonel Otis. And he was in the Confederate Army and they, she lived on a plantation at that time. And about her having some little boys that were on the plantation sew in her crinoline skirts contraband for the Confederates. And she would take them across the line. And she got caught three times. And one time when she got caught, it was her nephew who was on the other side, on the Union side. But they let her go through. So that's where I start in Oklahoma. My family's been in Jefferson County, Claypool, Warwick area since 1891 is when my great granddad, Sylvester Gaines, his wife, Florence, and they had four children, came up from Mississippi. They lived in Bowie, Texas for a while, came into Jefferson County in the Claypool area and settled out there, like say in 1891. He was able to do that because they were Ch or Chickasaw descent. So at that time it was Indian territory and if you weren't the Chickasaw Nation went, like he said, to the 98th parallel. Well, they settled out there in 1891. Uh, Sylvester died in 1906, and his 16-year-old son, Laster, who was my granddad, took over the ranch and ran it until the early 1960s when he passed away. My great uncle, Stephen Walker Ryan, uh, came here in, I believe, 1876, and uh, eventually founded the town of Ryan. When Uncle Walker first came here, he said that the grass was up to the saddle blanket on his horse. And, uh, you know, grass was good here. You know, there was plenty of water, shade trees along the creeks. Must have been uh, a beautiful place. And uh, I think the first people that discovered that were the drovers that were coming up the Chisholm Trail. Addington was a very exciting place. And I assume the Chisholm Trail run right through Addington and that's probably how it got started in 1890 is when people started uh, settling down there. And the railroad track crosses the 98th meridian over on the west side uh, where Cow Creek is about a mile north and then comes back about a mile south of Warica. Well at that time uh, the state of Oklahoma was a dry state and they couldn't unload any alcohol anywhere on the state but whenever they got to Warica the little uh, detour that the railroad took, put it in Indian territory and they could unload alcohol. So you might say we started as a bootlegger town, but that's where all the alcohol in this area was unloaded at our depot. The old train depot used to be down by Beaver Creek and he established uh, the first uh, general store and he, he built a cotton gin and a, a feed mill and uh, those were some of the first businesses in Ryan. The train is what made Addington. When it come there we had a brick factory down by the train track. This is, everything was on the west side because the train track was there. Our depot there was twice as large as this one here. The baggage compartment was uh, as large as this whole depot here and it was a wooden depot instead of a brick. And we had four passenger trains a day stop in Addington going south, uh, pick up people. And it was, it was exciting to see that porter step off the plane, off the train and, you know, put his stool down and then all aboard, you know. The troop trains used to come through Warica and uh, on a, they would find out what day the troop train was coming through and the ladies auxiliary would put up tables uh, at the depot and those troop trains would stop there and those soldiers would just boil out of those cars 
and mother and her lady friends would have sandwiches and lemonade. And to, to be four years old and watch those guys just, you know, they were so tickled to get off the train and to get something homemade to eat. It was a, a really a great feeling. When I was on the ranch, my dad fed steers during the winter and he would come in and make arrangements for the the cars to ship them to Kansas City and Chicago. And they would drive them in from 14 miles out. They'd start about three o'clock in the morning and they'd get in here about one or two o'clock. And We had a stockyard that no other town in the area had. Uh, they would drive their stock for 50, 60, 70 miles to put them on the train there at Addington because they had a huge stockyard down by the railroad track there. One time, Daddy was getting the big steers rounded up to sell at uh, Ringo, and there's a railroad that comes through. Well, he didn't know the train was coming, and he had all those steers there, about 200 head of them. That train blew the whistle. The cattle, it took him three days to round up the cattle. Oh, from then on, he called to find out when the train was coming through. <laughs> As time grew on, uh, we got uh, we got trailers, and you'd think we had those back then, but we didn't. And uh, when I was a youngster uh, up at Addington on the Price Ranch, I'd get up early in the morning, and I would take seven or eight horses to the back side, and my cousin would do the same thing. And then the cowboys would come around and pick up, so we'd drive the cattle to certain pens, and. Uh, and then we'd drive them to the rail yards. Then we got pickups, I mean, 18-wheeler uh, trucks. Then we could start hauling cattle. And then we got live auctions, and that's how that has all changed. A total of about 36 businesses in Addington uh, during the 20s and 30s, and uh, there were two banks, one on the north end where the well is, one on the west side, and the old vault still stands at the back of the building there. And then there's a bank on the east side. There are two-story buildings. It was just torn down in the 60s, so a lot of history. There was a car dealership, a gin, uh, ice cream parlor, grocery stores, everything, uh, because it was about... 1200 when it was really going and they had a spring that where LaDonna gets her water down right east of Oscar and they called that Tent City because that's where they kept all the mules and the people that worked there they had their tents down there. Warico, at one time uh, I believe it had uh, seven car dealerships so we had a lot of businesses here in Warwick. I can remember when there was eight banks in this county. And I can remember six grocery stores, uh, four, at least four, uh, clothing stores or department stores. I, I can even remember we had one taxi cab here. It's right there next to where Elkins was. It said taxi, reserved for the taxi. One time mom parked there and we came out and the taxi had blocked her in. <laughs> you didn't park there, but it, this was just a delightful town. My dad would sell in a season approximately 98,000 baby chicks. And there were hatcheries in every town doing that. And most people just bought a couple of hundred or something. Uh, you know, to eat, uh, keep the layers, uh, the hens are laid. But it, it, was, it was a nice business. It also had the feed store. So, And our business also, it seemed like a lot of them. It was a lot of people in Warica. There was a lot going on Main Street. But people from Irving Consolidated, Sugden, Claypool, even as far as Rhine, going out that way, I, and Addington and Hastings all came into town in Warica to 
bring in their goods. They have were about four producers that had bought skins, uh, animal skins, eggs, cream, uh, all kinds of th that bring their goods in. And so there's just a lot of people in. Even in those days, we had a lot of customers from Petrolia and buyers that would come in. We really got to know the candidates a little bit better. And when Cleve ran for office, I remember going to Grady and to Petersburg and all these little rural communities, and they would have box suppers or pie sales or something. And then you would hear all of the politicians. And Warrego would have a big meeting on Main Street. And sometimes there would be a cakewalk or something like that downtown. But it was a time of gathering. We didn't uh, wait to read something in the paper, or it wasn't on television. The candidates weren't. And they knocked on doors with their card. But the county was so wonderful, and they would be involved and interested in the, uh, in the election. And that was how they found out about it then. On Tuesday, well, everybody would gather, and uh, Mary or the election board, they would post the results on, on the south side of Brown Drug. Uh -huh. and, and then you had a, a, a trailer there, too, yeah. and we'd sit on the trailer, and we'd be watching, and then here come the runners, and they'd post the latest results from Claypool or Oscar or Ryan or Grady. Uh, these were late coming in because they drove the feathers. But uh, it, we might sit there at 1 o'clock and try to figure out who'd, who'd won the race. Uh, on election night, everybody in town gathered there on the street, and they had the counts coming in right there. So uh, you had probably a 1,000 people there watching the election polls come in. Our biggest flood was 1955 have a picture somewhere of my dad sitting in his dentist office in the front door of his dentist office fishing in the alley. I can remember during those floods uh, the guys in their boats starting from in front of the store and going down South Main in a, in a motorboat to pick up people that had gotten trapped in their home. I remember going in to one of my best friend's homes in a boat for the senior, tri uh, the senior prom. The reason we got the lake was to control this flooding because both the creeks run into the lake. The uh, caravan that we had for the Warica Lake, I remember the day that we did that, there was probably 15 miles of cars that went to Lawton to the new Lawtonian Hotel and met with some people up there, they were trying to get the Warwick Lake Dam built. And we went on a big tour, and nearly everybody in town, they just shut the town down, and we all went on this tour. And evidently it worked, because we, we got it. The downtown was nothing like it is it was at that time. And people would go, the stores would stay open, and people would go down there uh, during the evening. That was their way of visiting with each other. We weren't in front of a television set. So it was, it was a very wonderful time to grow up in this, in this city. You couldn't get a parking place, and the cars were double parked behind all up and down Main. And all of the stores were busy. And uh, my dad was a dentist here. And uh, he would go home to eat lunch, and uh, then about 1 o'clock, uh, he would drive down to the Brown, in front of Brown Drug, park the car right there in front, and then he would walk home, and he and Mother would eat evening meal, and then all three of us would walk back downtown, and the car was parked in a really good place on Main Street, and the women would sit in the car and visit, and Dad would sit on the, on the front fender of the car, and all the guys walking up and down the street would visit. The cars were parked everywhere, and uh, they parked 
in the middle of the road and half of them would get bumped in whenever they backed out. <laughs> and we gathered in uh, the grocery stores and visited. And in Roy's uncle's cafe, Epperson Cafe, and I can remember the waiters at the time, they wore black pants and white shirts and black leather bow ties. And going to the movies, and sometimes the uh, midnight movie, we had a quarter, we got in for a dime, we had popcorn for a nickel, we had Coke for a nickel, and if the drugstore stayed open, we had an ice cream cone. It was, it was so much fun, we didn't have television, and I'd go to the Empress Theater and see the main theater, I mean, main show. And then Mother never did like for me to go to the Royal Theater because it just wasn't up to the standards. The Royal Theater, when you went in, you never wore good shoes because your feet stuck to the floor. Uh, it, 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 it was never cleaned. Uh, uh, Ernest and Ed uh, didn't have time for that, but... Uh, but used to, for 10 cents, you could go to the show, and for 15 cents, they'd get rid of me for all after Saturday afternoon. If you see Roy Rogers or Hopalong Cassidy or Whip Wilson and all the previews. and uh, A preview was it maybe it was a two-hour movie, and they'd cut it off right at the end where you think somebody's going to get killed, and then you go back the next week and find out that he rolled down the hill and he's all right. Warwick always had pride in was their football team. Warwick won state championship in 51? 51. In 1951, uh, the guys were coming back from the, uh, from the Korean War. Or they would be 20 and 21 years old, but there was no age limit. On, they were getting their last year of high school, so they would play football, and there wasn't anybody. We, we'd be dunking even, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. We were, we were pretty sold. It was a prime example of how Warica all pulled together because during that football game, if you can imagine the whole city of Warica sitting on that west side of Owen Field, just a little old bunch of us up there, but everybody in town was there. And I remember somebody remarking, boy, it would be a good time to rob a bank in Warica. Yeah. <laughs> there wouldn't have been anybody there. Is no. that It was just a neat place to grow up and the best people in the world. But it's the people, the kindness. Uh, you need help, you can get help. And everybody, it, it's just, it's, it's such a small community that everybody's got a heart for each other. And I wouldn't trade it for the world. There was a community spirit, you know, and... Uh, it's so much different now, but still, I think if you live even today in a town like Ryan or Rico or Addington, I, I think that same spirit is still alive. It's a great place to be from, and I've lived on four continents and 42 countries, and my home is still Addington, Oklahoma. In a community such as Ryan and Warica, I think what we find is the support during the good times, the support during the bad times, and the caring of a community. And you know, I wouldn't trade that for anything.